So tell us, why is demand for cheap, for greener vehicles going through the floor? Well, I think there's a, a series of factors, but fundamentally at the moment, I think the, the UK population is probably more worried about cost of living than anything else. And within all of that, there's the energy crisis, which is fueling, for want of a, uh, less of a pun, a, a concern around the, the actual energy price they're going to be putting into their vehicle, the, the electricity prices, of course. That is more of a perceived issue than a real issue, according to our data. But it is dampening demand in as much as the, the growth that we've seen over the past years is starting to sort of flatline a little bit in, in the context of um, needing it to continue on, on a very fast trajectory if we're to uh, hit our road to 2030 targets when, as I'm sure you'll know, by 2030, we need to actually ban the sale of uh, petrol and, and uh, diesel engines and electric needs to completely take over at that point. So to see any sort of waning of interest due to whatever factor is a concern. Interesting things about this. The RAC released figures in September showing a 42% surge in the cost of charging electric vehicles because, of course, prices are through the roof. And that equates to 18 pence a mile for an electric vehicle as opposed to only 19p for petrol, 21p for diesel. So as Bill Clinton said, it's the economy, stupid, right? <laughs> um, he's probably right. He was right on a lot of things, but um, I think it's a, a little bit more complex than some of that data suggests. We at Autotrader, we are a data company. Essentially, we have um, more than 10 million people looking at cars every single month on our platform, spending maybe roughly three and four of every minute uh, spend looking at cars in the UK on our platform. So we get a great insight into what they're actually thinking and doing. And according to the, the vehicle data we get, aside from the consumer data, we can see that the reality is a little different to some of that uh, research on the, the pricing point you just mentioned. So, for example, we can see a, a benefit of around £124 per thousand miles driven for a, an electric vehicle over a nice vehicle. So that's in all types of running costs added together. So that's quite a considerable saving. Um, and it's rather different to taking one vehicle here or there in different contexts and so on, and maybe talking about the rise in energy prices. There's, also, of course, been a rise in fuel prices. When we did see that rise in fuel prices or when we saw last autumn people queuing at the pumps, we saw a huge uh, growth of interest in electric. So some of the more negative articles more recently need to really focus on the hard data. And according to, like I said, our own data, there's still a very significant benefit in driving an electric vehicle over an ice. It doesn't, unfortunately, um, compensate for the gap in sort of sticker price when you're buying the vehicle. An electric vehicle typically is still around a third more expensive than a, than a petrol diesel equivalent. So there, there needs to be this big running cost gap um, and a positive, a positive gap. And there needs to also be um, further sort of softer incentives, if not fiscal incentives from the government. And again, talking to the sort of slight negative vibe in the, uh, the consumer mindset at the moment, we've actually fed that negativity with a small but nonetheless symbolic uh, tax uh, rise on electric vehicles in Jeremy Hunt's recent proposals that, uh, again, hit the headlines, caused uh, some concern in the minds of consumers. Add to that, you might imagine people are starting to hear that there may be some road usage charging coming down the, down the tracks. That, again, may fuel... Uh, concern that people will uh, maybe be, as they were with diesel, encouraged to buy a certain type of vehicle and then maybe penalised further down the road. What's the second-hand market like with electric vehicles? And, and you know, how much of a factor is it? I mean, people like my husband will say to me, we're not going to buy an electric car until they've evolved a bit, because at the moment, you know, they're still working out the technology and in a few years' time, they'll be cheaper and, and more efficient. Well, I think he's quite right that they, they will likely be cheaper and more efficient as things go. And I think that's the, the real... Um, opportunity ahead of us. They need to get cheaper and more efficient because, like I said, they are considerably more expensive um, than their petrol or diesel equivalents today. Given that the government is incentivizing that, the only way to bridge the price gap is that the manufacturers themselves find some significant economies of scale. Um, so they need to see the continuous focus from government and across the industry to drive that scale. That will increase the, uh, their ability to actually uh, you know, yes, eke out these, uh, these economies and so on and bring the price down. And probably, as your husband is right to, to conclude, increase things like range capacity and so on. Fundamentally today, though, the, the used electric vehicle market is actually very, very positive, very healthy. We've seen electric go from being far slower to turn, if you like, the speed of sale of a, a used car during the uh, lockdowns where people needed to get behind the wheel of a car. If they'd never driven electric, it was hard to imagine they'd buy one. But we've seen it ex accelerate. That speed of turn for electric got to be quicker than every other fuel type in recent months. But just in the last couple of months, it's turned slightly the wrong way. What we've seen is an arrival of a little bit more stock. We've got twice the amount of used electric vehicle stock in the market than we did at the beginning of 2021. So in almost two years, it's doubled, which is great. We need to see more, more availability. 
Because fundamentally, what we need is people to be able to to get into an electric vehicle at whatever price level, whether that's the, the newer ones, which are more expensive, obviously newer than used, and the price gap as well that I just mentioned to petrol or diesel, or a more affordable, you know, a, a five to ten year old Nissan Leaf at five to seven thousand pounds or so is the kind of price bracket that somebody living in a ULES maybe needs to be able to get mm. into an electric vehicle for. Those cars still have great technology; they're not surpassed massively by the latest vehicles, but like with any uh, used vehicle, they're, they're less uh, maybe optimum than the brand new item that's out on the shelf, but they're affordable and they're relevant for many people. Okay. Okay, Imp, 